South America is home to a lot of interesting looking animals. Possibly the goofiest one is the giant anteater. With a tube snoot, a bushy tail, and a panda for an arm, the anteater prowls the shrublands looking for, you guessed it, ants. But why does it look like a pool noodle taped to a couple of porcupines? Well, it's all about having the right tongue for the job here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a big, bushy eyebrow, but more on that later. Yeah. (laughs) In the intro that you just heard, I described it as a pool noodle taped to a couple of porcupines. Fair enough. Or like a dust devil vacuum. That's another good one. A a handheld (laughs) vacuum cleaner. Oh, like Um, a feather duster. A feathered? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even as a handle. What are we talking about? We're talking about the giant anteater. Yeah, no feathers to be dusted here. Just feathers to be ruffled. Yes. Uh, Uh, Yeah. It's the giant anteater, but we're going to call call it uh the eviction snootus <laughs> uh snoot scamander because it's a bug wizard extraordinaire um and then bolicky licky remember that from pirates and then the tampa bay buccinators <laughs> buccinator yeah i'll talk about bu- buccinators later and i okay. was like who better we, we were just talking about sports in our warm up so you know I've just got sports on the brain I love them I love sports ah. well would you like to know what science has to call it yeah well they're in the kingdom you know love and are in the kingdom animalia they're in the phylum chordata in the class mammalia by now you know what all of those things mean but you might not know is what the order pillosa means. It's a order of pillows. Pillows. Yep, an mm. order of pillows. I ordered one my pillow, please. It's uh mammals native to the Americas. It includes anteaters and sloths. I didn't know that it it makes sense. Knowing certain things about it now. Also general shape. The C shape. Makes yeah, sense. a sloth is just um, an anteater that's upside down. And with a uh, I'm just nose. stalling because I'm trying to <laughs> muster up the will to say the family, which is Myrmi- Myrmicophagidae. Myrmicophagidae? Myrmicophagidae? Yeah, Myrmicophagidae. And then yeah. the, I guess that would make the genus Myrmicophagia. Um, but the <laughs> species is Myrmicophagia tridactyla. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Tri- um, yep. Do you have any? So, uh, since we're in the business of naming things, mm-hmm. it's time for my favorite part of the show. Critter groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question, and that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal? Or what is the term of venery? Or what is the collective noun? If you saw a group of anteaters, which would be rare unless you were at the zoo because they don't Mm -hmm. really hang out with each other, um, would you say it's A, an ankle of anteaters, B, a bilge of anteaters 
C, a candle of anteaters, or D, a daze of anteaters? What the heck? A, B, C, D. I'm going to go with a daze of anteaters. Final answer. Final answer. We're cutting you off. This is your final (laughs) answer. It's my final ant, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, sir, this this one, this is my final ant. Um, mm-hmm. You're incorrect. The answer is C, candle. It's a well, candle that's... of giant ant eaters. How could you not know that? It's so obvious. Pure nonsense. And it's when I think ant eater, I the first thing I think about is candles. Put a candle. I don't. I just. Window. On a cold, long winter's night. I feel I've got to move away from <laughs> terms of entry. <laughs> I can't. Well, you can't fight this feeling anymore. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're, can't you're feeling your feeling of love for the the, the critter groups. Terms of entry. Um. Oh, should we? Would you like me to describe it to you? I sure would. Okay. Well. Uh, the giant anteater is a hairy, bushy, eyebrow shape, shaped monster, uh, from where the wild things are. It's Tom Selleck's mustache come yeah. to life. Mm-hmm. It's an enchanted come mustache. Come to life. Um, they, they have long, thin faces, <laughs> short ears, beady little trailer park eyes and a big wet nose. Trailer Park guys, isn't I, the titular character? That, isn't one of the main characters from Trailer Park Boys specifically have large eyes because of his glasses? I don't know anything about Trailer Park Boys, but Johanna and I like saw that on a TikTok or something, like a like a little an animal's eyes being described as beady little trailer park eyes, and we've been saying that since then. <laughs> when I think of Trailer Park eyes, I immediately think of I think his name is like Bubble or something like that. And he just has these massive glasses in his eyes. No, those are trailer park guys. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Never mind. I'm I'm wrong. You got it. (laughs) Uh, Anteaters come in all in in black, white, and gray coats with hair hanging down to the ground. Mm -hmm. They're very bushy. And the pot at the end, the pot of pot at the end of this grain bow, grain bow is a big bushy tail that's about as long as their face, but in the other direction. So they look the same going front and back, coming, coming, coming backwards and going forwards. A grain bow is just, just a bunch of people throwing wheat into the air, right? No, it's a gray rainbow. (laughs) Grain bow. Yeah. Grain. Well, should we get into the measure up? We don't have a new measure of intro this week, which is lame. Dadgum. I saw in the email that we had a, an email called intro. And I was like, oh, and then it was just someone trying to. Yes. Introducing something. themselves like, to their product. They're introducing <laughs> us to their product. How did you know that we would click on something called intro? How did you know that's what we desperately needed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've played on my okay. deepest darkest yearnings and desires <laughs> okay welcome to the blood measure up segment the official listeners favorite part of the show the part of the show when we <clears throat> present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family it's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying singing or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com we do, we do not have a new measure of intro, as I said. Uh, so we get to sit in our sadness and uh, relive the good times and go and listen to a in in a, a classic. No, it looks like a full panda. Its look at arm go, looks at it. Look, it look does. at the picture its that's on Wikipedia. Like, if you look at the picture that that's on Wikipedia, it looks like a pa- it's behind a panda. Yeah, it looks like a full panda uh, because 
its tail looks like the back the the panda's hind legs its back legs look like the panda's front legs and then its front legs it's it's got this panda like eye blotch on it so it looks like a panda grazing on the ground Mm -hmm. in a place where there are no pandas (laughs) yeah uh well without further ado the listener's favorite part of the show Move that thing up, son. <laughs> That's back. We're back to <laughs> Melissa's like treasure trove that she sent us. And I forgot about the energy of that one. <laughs> Measure it up quickly. Measure that thing up, son. Quickly. My fan is about to fly off its hinges. Oh, I didn't hear the fan that time. <laughs> it was there. It was there. Uh, thank you, Melissa. And um, if no one sends us any more, we have two more from Melissa to relive. But that, that don't let that those be are the excuse. glory days. Yeah. Let's talk length. <laughs> Wait, I just I imagine make fun you... of Melissa's fan because I had one that was like really old. The cage had like broken and like I took it off, so it was just like a dangerous plastic blade spinning in the air on on a desk somewhere and if you grazed it it would uh chew up your arm a little bit cut off a the part of your finger mm-hmm. i just imagine you like the these are the glory these are the glory days and melissa sent these in so i just imagine you like mr incredible realizing you could go back to being mr incredible you just look at get all of the things on your wall and they're just measure ups by melissa <laughs> melissa melissa and nora yeah, and it's just like da 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 da, da. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just crying a little bit. <laughs> Remember Reliving the glory days is better than acting like they didn't happen, right? That's true. That's true. So let's talk length. There are between 102 to 217 centimeters, which is a large amount of centimeters. Um, to still sure. be centimeters. Uh, they're, they're five, that's five foot 11 and a half to seven foot one and a half inches. Yeah. I think at that point you start doing meters and centimeters, right? Maybe they just don't do that. I mean, maybe we're the dumb ones out here being like, it's seven feet and one and a half inch. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) I do feel stupid doing that. Yeah. We are, we are Um, dumb for that. (laughs) (laughs) So how many... Of the largest ants ever discovered, go into the giant ant eater. Oh boy! Here's a hint: you don't have to worry about them because they're dead. The largest ant ever is an extinct species called Titanomyrma gigantum. That sounds bad for the environment. I. I mean, if the environment uh, was uh, Titanomyrma gigantium. I'm, s- I'm seeing a similarity with this Myrma stuff. But the, the largest living ant is the driver ant, which maxes out at two inches. Let's try three inches. Or unless three you were just inches. anchoring me. A three-inch ant is basically a cockroach anyway, so. Oh, man. I found the biggest cockroach at the urinal at church the other day. (laughs) Do what must be done. So I just crushed it, (laughs) and then I had to go wash my shoe off. Oh, man, I can't. I will not rest until the cockroach is crushed if I see one in the house. If it's in the house, but it was at like church, I could have just walked away, but you know, I'm I'm not saying I'm a hero. But <laughs> there goes my hero. <laughs> well, you're certainly not a hero among cockroaches. No, no. I'm anathema to them. Um There's a there's a a video by a guy named Joel Haver on uh Oh on I love YouTube. Joel Haver. Who it just can't it's just like a pretty new video and it's like a guy dies and goes to heaven and he finds out that like he shouldn't have killed like he like he did a, you know he's a pretty good person but like you killed too many bugs you killed like 1200 <laughs> bugs 
<laughs> and they're like, we allow you to kill 200 bucks, but 1200, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I got to watch that. His Charmin one is probably my favorite one ever. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, he's the bear doesn't want to... Charmin's son doesn't want to sell That, that was paper. stolen by SNL. Did you see that? Like, almost completely, perfectly stolen. Really? No, I mean, I don't... I don't care about SNL, so it doesn't pop up on my radar either. Just like sports. I mean, I love sports. Um, my answer is 28. 28 ants, um, final answer? 28 ants going to the length of this. Uh, the giant ant here, yes. The correct answer is 36 ants. Queens were around six centimeters or two and a half inches oh, uh, with a five inch wingspan, though. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. But I guess ants are pretty close to max, like maximum size already they're okay. optimized in terms of size that is not a uh, nursing school victory i got a 77 on that one and since we're gonna measure up it does not push me over the edge dang that's a tough loss yeah because that's the loss that nobody likes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i either need uh, to win or lose school, you could spectacularly have you could have gotten if this was undergrad if this was anything not. other than nursing school or uh, engineering school, I would have been fine. Uh, let's talk weight. They're 33 to 50 kilograms or 73 to 110 pounds. How many of the largest meal ever consumed in modern history go into the giant anteater? So we're talking largest meal ever consumed by a single person in one sitting. Here's a hint. The meal I was eaten say that, by like Kobayashi. <laughs> you'd think, but the, the the meal was eaten by an unknown thirty two year old female model. Uh, and it was recorded in the Lancet Medical Journal in nineteen eighty five. It was said to contain liver, kidneys, kidneys, steak, eggs, cheese, slices of bread, mushrooms, carrots, cauliflower, peaches, pears, apples. Bananas, plums, grapes, and two glasses of milk. The largest meal ever. And she has two glasses of milk with it. I'd have a whole Okay, gallon. so so I didn't I didn't uh tell you all the things, but I said peaches and pears and apples and eggs and steak. There's multiple of all of these things. Yeah. It's funny because I What was like, happening to her? <laughs> I saw a I saw a picture of the rock on his diet cheat day. And it's just a picture of all all of he just he went into a cracker barrel and said all of it please. And I can't, and if that's not the record <laughs> I I'm trying to th I'm trying to imagine how much food this this woman ate. I don't understand this meal. If you're on a bender, <laughs> why are you eating cauliflower? What's the point of wasting space with cauliflower? She ate yeah, the whole think, food pyramid. Yeah, you'd think it's like the biggest meal ever would be uh, like exclusively chicken sandwiches or something like that. There's no dessert. Did you say there's grapes? That must count. Um, I mean, there were definitely there's definitely fruit in there. Okay, so the weight of this meal. I mean, there's only there's, there's only so much you can actually only so many cc's of food you can put into your body, right? We're not talking volume; we're talking weight. Mm-hmm. What was she doing? And why don't we know her name? It wasn't a competition. She just did this. <laughs> why? I want to know so much more about this, and we just don't have the information. Seems suspicious. Well, it was in a medical journal. That still exists to this day. 
So this didn't, Do you didn't trust ruin the it was a med- it was a medical journal and this story didn't ruin them. <laughs> 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 you idiots, this is fake. You don't get to be a medical journal anymore. I'm gonna say five pounds. Five pounds? So twenty two. Yes. Meals. Five pounds seems like a lot. I'm literally just going by what how much a pound of like steak would be, and that is a lot of food. So So if you went to Cheeburger Cheeburger and ordered five pounder burgers. No, that's not a lot, you're right. Five full on burgers though, man. Well, that one is, pound I mean, burgers are not normal. You could but, order Okay, I have to consider the fact that like uh, yeah, these these hot dog eating competitions they they eat they eat like 30 hot dogs. So it has to be more than that. Unless you don't consider 20, those a meal. 20 quarter pounders. So, uh, let's say a hot dog weighs yeah, like a quarter like a quarter pounder. Yeah, so it has to be like I'll go I'm going to go with 8 pounds. 8 pounds. So the answer is thir- 13 I'll go with I'll round it up to 14 um 14 of these meals that this lady ate could go into uh the weight of an ant eater. Final answer. Final answer. The correct answer was five meals. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the meal was 19 pounds. That's 8.6 kilograms. What kind of a model was this person? <laughs> that, that, um, seems, that's, that seems that seems like a model T. She's just a T16. She's a truck. <laughs> she, I mean, that sounds like it's. She just ate ten percent of her body weight. <laughs> okay, so here's what the metrics of the actual foods were: um, a pound of liver, ten percent of her body of weight, kidneys, uh, a half pound of steak. She was being modest. Two eggs, one pound of cheese, uh, two one pound of cheese, two large slices of bread, uh, one pound of mushrooms. Two pounds of carrots, one cauliflower. <laughs> so okay, fair enough. You're only gonna have one. That's if you're gonna eat the cauliflower, definitely moderate that. Uh, Ten peaches, four pears, two apples, four bananas, two pounds of plums, two pounds of grapes, two pounds of grapes, <laughs> and then and two glasses of milk to wash it down. What you're reading to me is the hungry, hungry caterpillar as a horror novella (laughs) 10 peaches what this took so long this took her five hours did it or you it had to have is that what you think it had just eating 10 peaches alone takes a good amount of like 15 minutes i mean are you are you sure she's just not like the old lady that swallowed a fly and just unhinged her jaw and consumed it and the table Maybe she had like ten tapeworms. Maybe she, her <laughs> she stomach has, acid was just. She had to help. Anything. It doesn't count. <laughs> well, <laughs> somebody yeah, in the comments is, um, just typed in the comments on GuinnessWorldRecords dot com just said unethical question <laughs> mark. <laughs> it's unethical. For you to eat that amount of food. <laughs> Should have given it to and some, it, like, village. You could have fed a village with that. <laughs> anyone else sing this to the tune of 12 Days of Christmas? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is a lot. Uh, Somebody else um, just said cool. Food. Uh, also, that's enough uh, organ meat to ensure that you're going to get kidney stones. That's enough cheese to ensure that you'll never pass anything ever again. <laughs> yeah, you are, your GI tract is is frozen in time now. Your GI tract, that cheese turned into Gandalf and none shall pass. 
<laughs> it broke the bridge. We're done. Gandalf that the servant White of Cheddar. the secret fire is there. <laughs> and a fire there was. Um, wow. Okay. That was a good one. Okay. Let's talk fast facts before we get into the major fact. They're native to South and Central America. Anyway, that's, uh, that's all. And I'm just kidding. Uh, multiple habitats are home to the giant anteater, including grasslands and forests. Despite living in overlapping home ranges, giant anteaters are mostly solitary, except when taking care of their offspring or mating. Uh, a mother anteater carries her offspring on her back until they're weaned. Like a little backpack. Um, that's I guess it's a sloth thing, too. Only it's not on their back. They like sit in the hammock of their stomach. It's like the and sunshine a... of your love. <laughs> what? The, su- the hammock of it's your stomach. Song, right? Yeah. The sunshine um, of your love is the hammock of your stomach. <laughs> uh, they, they walk on the knuckles of their forelimbs like an ape. I didn't know this. Um, and this helps them maintain their long curved claws, which they use for digging in, in a hook and pull motion. Slothish. And they run I a few feel degrees. slothish. How about you? Yeah. Speaking of slothish, they run a few degrees colder than most mammals, and uh, they average around 92 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is due to a slower metabolic rate and a slowed, relaxed disposition. Like a sloth. I don't know why I didn't put the two on top of two, but... Um, they are slothish. Yeah. Their big bushy tail makes them look like huge badger squirrels, though. So. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all I got. Do you have any big facts? <laughs> um, also, while they do tend to have a gen- uh, relaxed disposition, they can also be aggressive. And a zookeeper was killed by one. In 2007. Wow. I would not in Argentina. that. Yeah, it could just call, it's got knives on its hands. So if it decides it wants to stab you with them. Um, it will. It, it, yeah, you're, 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 you're in for a treat. The, the, the anteater's name was Ramon. And was particularly <laughs> aggressive. Um. And it says between 2010 and 2012, two hunters were killed by giant eat- ant eaters in Brazil. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you s- somehow see one of these in the wild, uh, do not pet it. But still, kind of want one as a pet. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about their ma- the major facts, which I forgot to name. So we'll just call it tongue and groovy. Um, so anteaters, as you may, as you may have noticed, uh, have a goofy looking mug. Their snoots are long, their lips are small, and their eyes are beady. Trailer park beady, apparently. But why do they look like they belong in a cantina on Tatooine? Um, it all has to do with their diet, which is, I mean, you probably guessed it, ants and termites. They eat other things too, but mainly ants and termites. Um, but ants live in nests that can sometimes extend 10 or more feet below the surface. Did did you know this? Did you know that the average ant nest in Florida is seven feet deep? I did not know that. That is terrifying. I'm just imagining like, (laughs) I'm (laughs) like, I'm standing there with my pest killer orc and stuff. And I'm like, I'm just spraying it into this this um, ant mound that's popped up in my yard, and then just like the camera pans down to a cross section of my yard, and it's just seven feet of tunnels with millions of ants under there, and it's just tremors waiting to happen. Um, but that's why you, I mean, you can try and kill as many as you can in like a an ant hill, and then they just they just keep coming, <laughs> unless the only way to I mean, really stop it is to get them to take the poison to the queen. 
Or do that thing where you uh, pour molten like tin or aluminum oh, yeah. down there, and and like have a cool art exhibit of the of your genocide, <laughs> yeah, of your colonial destruction. <laughs> yeah, like Zap Branding. That's something Zap Brannigan would do. Um, so termites tend to make their pet nests above ground, uh, but the mud, grit, and spit that makes up the exterior shell can be like as hard as stone sometimes like if, if only anteaters had tarzan's man smarts to flush those termites out remember when he like takes the elephant tusk and or elephant trunk and like blows all the termites out <laughs> like I, I don't think that's how it that works but okay um but the anteater doesn't need the ingenuity of a natural uh uh european intelligence it has a nose for these kinds of things <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> I, I am just I, I'm. What are you talking about? I'm Ed, Edgar Rice Burroughs pilled. I'm I'm towing the party <laughs> line. Um, everything that's not like that doesn't look like me is deserves death. Uh, yeah, and everything that does look like me is uh, beautiful and smart. Um, so the ant eater tracks the pheromones that the ants use to get around and communicate um, with its snoot. So the anteater will saunter from mound to mound, uh, absolutely just decimating ant populations like it's War of the Worlds. Um, I wish I could have one as a pet, but my HOA would never allow it. Not to mention probably my wife and my dogs. But my my kids would probably like it. They'd probably Your dogs involved. would put their paws down. They'd say, this is the last straw. <laughs> we will not allow this. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because... One of my dogs actually does that motion where he just like takes his paw and like just plants it down. Like I'm putting my <laughs> putting my paw down on this. This is enough. Um, <clears throat> so once an ant eater finds a nest, uh, he'll start digging with his super sharp claws. And I've always wondered how ant eaters deal with ant bites. It's like I I mean. How, like, how do you how do you get around the fact that the ants are terrible um and it turns out the answer is that he does just that he deals with it no fancy <laughs> immunity no super skin he's just like i consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to me <laughs> which is a belly full of ants <laughs> which is which is food <laughs> um so uh the bites the bites hurt and can sometimes temporarily drive the anteater off. Um, but obviously, like, like he knows he knows where his bread is buttered. And it's on this anthill. <laughs> um, an anteater can visit up to 200 ant and termite nests in a day. Eating 30,000 of Flick's dearest friends. His mm. cup overfloweth. Uh, each nest takes him about a minute to to clear out as much as you can uh but so when you break it down it sounds impressive but when you break it down he really only eats about 150 ants per minute and i feel like if i if there was like an ant hill that where the ants were just pouring out and i just stepped on it i'd kill more than 150 ants but you know eating them is different um Let's just give me give me one minute and some good old fashioned orc and goodness, and I'll put the ant eaters' uh, record to shame in terms of killing. Um, but it's still impressive for you know an animal. So how do they do it? Well, it's all in the tongue, which can get up to two feet long, a little less than a third of its body length, longer than the length of its skull. Uh. So the tongue sits in the throat and is held by a special muscle called a uh, palate. <clears throat> and that stops it from clogging up the airway or the air airways. I almost said airwaves. Same thing, I guess. Um, it stops it from suffocating. Um, it has this, at the, the end of its snout is this tiny mouth, which is hilarious to look at. Um, it has no teeth uh, and its lower jaw is held together by a, a ligament. So it can open its like just mouth hole and let that long sticky tongue come out and slither right back in. Although it doesn't loll out the tongue like a like an 
like unrolling a wet sleeping bag. Um, and it doesn't slither out like a Harry Potter basilisk moving through suspiciously large sewer pipes. It f- flicks out. Get it? It flicks. Because hmm. he's killing flick. Um, but seriously, it does, it does flick in and out of the anteater's mouth at 160 times per minute. Which sounds like a lot, but it's, it's, until you realize it's three licks per second... Which is either an impressive guitar feat by Yngwie Malmsteen or an equally impressive feat by a dad that takes Spare the Rod, spare, Spoil the Child a bit too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I write jokes? It's, it never, it's, it's just never that it comes out right. <laughs> um, so they, uh, uh, the tongue is covered in a little, ba- uh, in little backwards fa- facing hair like thingies called, um, Papillae, and it's also covered in sticky saliva. So it flicks its tongue out, it goes into the ant nest, a bunch of ants get stuck to the saliva and the papillae, and the ant eater sucks its tongue back in with that's covered with ants now. Uh, and the ant eaters buccinators or buccinators, however you want to call it, which is why I call it the Tampa Bay uh, buccinator, um, which are muscles in the cheek. We actually have buccinators. Um, that they uh, let it retract the tongue without scraping off the ants. So that would be kind of useless if it could dart its tongue in there and then pull it back with ants and then all the ants just like fall off at its at the tip of its mouth. And it's like, wow, uh, now my nose just... Um, but when they eat, they swallow constantly. So the ants are actually crushed by the palate that holds the tongue before they make their way to the stomach. So it's not like his mouth and throat and stomach are just covered in living still living ants that are biting and uh and crawling around in there no they're they are crushed on their way in and uh the anteater's stomach has hardened folds that grind up the ants um which is kind of similar to um like the gizzard of a bird but the actual digestion is interesting too because anteaters can't produce their own stomach acid so what they do is first they as they lick up the ants they're also licking up uh, like dirt and sand and soil and stuff and that helps grind things down Um, a lot of animals will eat things like that in order to help digestion but the real mvp is the fact that it uses the uh formic acid in the ants themselves so the ants digest themselves in this thing's stomach. Hmm. And that's not the first time that like having a diet of ants actually turns out to your advantage because if you'll remember I think it's episode 4 that the the horny toad that shoots blood out of its eyes is acidic and gross because it eats ants. So, if your diet is ants, you're going to have some acid that you're going to want to use. <laughs> yeah, you might as well. Is it the moral of that story? Ants only have about five calories for per gram. Calories, calories, <laughs> and they have art galleries as well. That's why they have to eat thirty thousand of them in a day. Yeah, and of FAU football stadium is worth of a. Uh, uh, ants, if ants were people sized and could sit thank in chairs. Thank goodness they're not. <laughs> and thank goodness they can't. And that's all I got. If you're that's ever wondering how, how the ant eater uh, eats and how it deals with getting bit and stuff, I always thought that it had some sort of like immunity to it, like a mongoose has immunity to partial immunity to cobra bites and stuff like that. Um, or like a, a honey badger can just like just has super thick skin and so it's like go ahead sting me bees I don't care but the no the ant eater gets bit and he's like worth it <laughs> I bet the hair helps and the fact that they're like faces their their tongue and face like really like creates some distance between you know they're not getting right in there you know yeah, but he's he still digs his way in in the first place. So 
just imagine going to an active anthill and just just starting to dig in there <laughs> like you're like you're, you're looking for dinosaur bones and uh I feel like you're gonna have a hand covered in ants uh almost instantly on the second True. on the second scoop you will have a hand covered in ants so and these are South American ants so it they're, would be they're no joke the yeah it's like the tell of it well also I'm thinking of that scene in the Tom Cruise movie where like there's this like snake thing going through the house and it's just an anteater's tongue <laughs> oh yeah all right so that was the giant anteater so for you out there in podcastia protect your tube snoot keep your uh buccinators primed and stick your tongue in interesting places like the giant anteater here in life death and taxonomy Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. Tube snoot.